Hi. Previously, I've done a video on uh, design for manufacturing your circuit board, i.e. how to mount it in a panel uh, such as this for production. And I'll link that in down below. It's been incredibly popular, one of my most popular videos. But uh, so this is a kind of a follow up to that in how to add some automated test functionality to your particular panel to help in testing your final product. Because what people will do uh, with their panels if they're you know, a beginner or they're being lazy or they're not doing a huge run and they don't want to invest in an automated test system. Typically, they'll uh, put it in a panel like this. This is pretty essential for when you're getting your boards manufactured, especially for small boards like this. So uh, when it goes through the pick and place machine, instead of just manufacturing one tiny board at a time, like that you can actually pick and place all the parts at once so there's real big advantages to doing that and most people do that if they're going for any sort of reasonable uh, quantity putting them through a pick and place machine but uh, often uh, unless you're doing you know tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands you don't often invest in an automated test system to actually plug onto the thing but uh, as we'll see today for, even for my microcurrent I'm doing a new version of this and I thought I'd just add a test connector on the side of my panel here just to help out and just you know smooth that testing process even though I'm not making tens of thousands of these things um, it really is simple to add just some basic features to your panel just to simplify your testing so let's go now here's an example of an ATE connector, automated test equipment connector, designed in to a commercial product. And uh, this is something that I worked on a few years back. And you'll see that on the edge of the product here, which is actually hidden, uh, normally hidden to the user by way of uh, you know mounting rails and things like that. You don't ordinarily see this, but it's got a card edge PCI connector built into there. Yes, it's the same PCI connector uh, you'll find in your PC. Now, the good thing about uh, PCI connectors is that you know they're standardised. They're good for a large number of insertions in terms of. Uh, you know, the test connector, if you're testing thousands of these boards, you don't want to have to replace your connectors all the time. And we'll uh, see that in a minute. And the other good thing about a large PCI connector like this, it has a lot of connections. It's got all those on the bottom as well. So, and you can transfer power and lots and lots of data and test signals. And that's exactly what happened on this particular product. We sort of, uh, in the design process of the product, routed out all of these signals out of here sort of you know in parallel with all sorts of other stuff and there were dedicated IO pins coming from the processor and FPGA to uh, enable this functionality which was designed in to the product from day one. Now of course we could have just used a you know, 0.1 inch header or something like that and that's okay if your board is designed to be uh, you know it is, is not going to be visible to the public then that's fine you can design it in but the thing about uh, header connectors and other off-board interconnect connectors is that you've got to physically plug a cable into them and that's a step that can go wrong you can bend pins it's messy it takes time so this card edge PCI connector what this allowed us to do is actually mount this board on a sliding rail system and here's one that I uh, hand built you just slide the board on top and then uh, with a big handle on the side just push it into a uh, purpose designed uh, test jig board on the side there with the PCI connector mounted on it and that works really well. It's very quick, it's very simple and uh, these card edge connectors here you don't need a really hard gold plating on these like you would on a normal uh, expansion card for example because this is only designed to be used once during the uh, manufacturing test and then that's it. This connector is never used again so you wouldn't be wasting your money on uh, hard gold edge plating on those connectors there. So here's the automated test board I designed for this thing and I've taped up a few things just to protect the innocent here and um, basically it had a uh, processing uh, module on here so it had its own local processing and it was designed to basically uh, perform most of the testing in combination with the test 
special test script which was downloaded to the product under test that plugged in. So I had one big main board here which mounted on the uh, chassis. I just got some mounting points because you don't make many of these. Um, you don't really, you know, this is not like a product. You might make say five or ten of these for a large production run or something like that. You'll test, you know, you'll have five or ten operators or something like that testing boards as they come off the production line. So that's about the number we had here and it's got various uh, programming interfaces, you know, power off on. It's just powered from an external plug pack or its own local regulation and down the bottom here it's uh, most interestingly it has all of the um, uh, pass fail functionality down here so all the different tests which were stepped through and some you know some spare just in case um, at the end of it and it's got pass fail leads for each one so these would all be populated you know red leads for fail green leads for pass so um, however many minutes it took it to just tick through each test and you'd see each lead come up red or green after you press the test button it basically handled everything there's a switch on here to apply power to the device under test here, here's the test interface connectors over here we'll take a look at how uh, it can measure the board current as well you can see a current uh, shunt resistor down oh, sorry that's a uh, that's a poly switch to protect the board from any uh, overload then it's got a current sense resistor little current sense amplifier so it can actually measure the current that's all uh, part of the test as well it's going to have a little uh, LCD on here so you know just a two line by 16 character thing so that you can get uh, status that's pretty handy and as I mentioned before the number of insertions because these test jigs have a finite lifetime of the test connector over here uh, you basically look at the data sheet for your connector and it might say a thousand mating cycles right so you would maybe you wouldn't go that far you might go okay I'm going to set it to 500 so this would just be one of those little LCD counter modules that every time a board is tested it just increments that counter by one and then once it gets to a uh, set number then you can uh, you know stop it to testing or you can warn the operator or whatever to uh, change this test board and the test interface uh, boards over here here we go just start uh, point basically converts that uh, PCI connector on the side to 0.1 inch ribbon headers which then connect over to the main board here so it allows you to mount this test interface uh, board test connector board vertically so that uh, you know on that sliding test jig I had there and then just easily connect over to the 0.1 inch header connectors and there's a test board which we plugged into the product under test to enable some uh, loopbacks and other functionality but that's just an example of a typical automated uh, test jig for a specific product and if you're serious about uh, production of any product then an automated uh, test system like this is absolutely vital to ensure that you know speedy and quick testing of your product on the test especially you know you're trying to build a low cost product for example you don't want to manufacture your product for a hundred bucks and then it costs you a hundred dollars in time to test the thing um, you know even at cheap uh, labor rates if there's a lot of testing that needs to be done for the thing then or you know, even ten bucks worth of testing you want to minimize that time so if you design uh, testing into your product to begin with or into your production panel then that can really help a lot in this case it wasn't a production panel it was the finished board so with my previous microcurrent design I've done videos which I link in down below of me actually uh, testing this thing and it was quite time consuming because yeah I produced it on a panel like this which is efficient for manufacturing of course uh, 5 by 2 10 boards total quite, you know I'm lowering my cost there but in terms of testing these things had to be individually broken out of here and then tested at the individual board level after inserting the battery on the back for each one for example and then you've got to operate it then you've got to plug all the leads in and out in this case I've only got a small number of connections two at the top two at the bottom here but even that would be a pain in the ass to plug leads in those four leads and you've got to do it for each unit so that's why I've shown this in a previous video where I designed this little uh, test jig where I could just take my finished board and just plug it on top like that hold it down and then uh, run the test and that was it it was you know reasonably efficient but uh, still I had to go through and manually flick the switches on each one and it didn't allow me to uh, you know test uh, some things because it was powered from the battery under test and things like that so it was okay that really reduced my production time but 
uh, considering I'm doing a new version of this board, I would like to design a bit of functionality into this panel so that I can possibly test all 10 at once while they're in the panel and without having to plug the power into each particular one. Because you may, like there's nothing worse than if you're not shipping this product because it contains the lithium battery, then nothing worse than having to insert the battery, do the test, and then remove the battery again before you ship the product. What a pain in the ass. Uh, you're just wasting time and money. So what I'm going to do is uh, integrate some functionality into this panel so, and into my individual bare board so that I can do uh, you know, not quite test 10 at once. It's not going to be that automated. I'm not going to go to town on this thing for various reasons, but just allow me to speed up the production a little bit more over this dinky test jig I've got here. So remember, when you get a panel manufactured like this, a panel is just part of the uh, PCB. So you can put traces, you can even put circuitry, connectors, and all sorts of stuff on here outside your product, and you can get signals on and off your board. But in this particular case, I didn't. I actually uh, V-grooved these old boards here. And if you do V-grooving, yeah, it's cheap and simple. You can just snap off your boards and everything, but you can't route signals across here, either top or bottom, because that V-groove, that just, you know, the uh, wheel comes along and just saws out all of your traces. They'd be cut. So we have to uh, convert this thing to having uh, breakout tabs. And here's not quite my uh, finished product, but it has got the uh, breakout tabs like this. So even though there's, you know, there's not much room in there, I can actually route out a trace or two top and bottom side of the board out of these little tabs here. So as you can see, there's not much room in here, but there certainly is enough room to route out, uh, route out a single, you know, 10 thou trace or something out of there and then down both top and bottom side. But because this is a front panel board, you know, the look and feel of this thing is quite important. So it's not like I can bring a veer up here and then, you know, route out a signal top side like that. It's just going to ruin the look and, you know, finish of the front panel of the product. So um, on this particular design, I am limited to the four corners on the bottom. Now I could add extra breakout tab here, for example, but once again, that doesn't cut out very nicely. I'd have to do some mouse bites in there, as they're called, and sort of dig into the product a bit, and you just don't get a nice smooth finish. But on the corners like this, when I break them out with a pair of side cutters, it works really well. So, you know, just for functionality, uh, and, and appearance sake, I'm going to limit myself to just four tabs on the corners on the bottom side. So that means I'm probably only going to be able to get out like a single trace on there. I don't want to push my luck. So I'm pretty much limited to four traces coming in and out of each particular board in this case. Now one thing you have to be careful of is that these routing paths here aren't exactly uh, precise. So, well, you can actually define them as precise, but typically the manufacturer will use whatever routing bit, uh, you know, it might be 2.4 millimeter standard routing size. In my case, I do know that. So I have route, so I have specified this channel as 2.4 millimeters wide. So I, I'm pretty confident how much space I have in there for a trace. And really, you know, it shouldn't eat it, but just be aware that there is uh, quite some manufacturing tolerance in there, it may not be exactly as you specify, unless you really handhold your uh, bare board manufacturer to get it uh, right. You know, if you start pushing two and three traces down there, you know, five thou or something like that traces, you can be in trouble. Just be aware of that. Last thing you want is for the routing tool to come along here and just, you know, that trace being right on the edge and just tear it off or uh, drill all the way through it. And if you are going to be a rebel and put like uh, several traces through here, generally you'd only put one trace through each uh, mouse bite. If you did a mouse bite, you'd have a couple of little, or you'd put multiple uh, vias along there, little holes so that you could actually cut it out. You might put one trace between there, but if you're really desperate, you might try and squeeze in uh, two traces in there. Just be careful of that, because if you then get in there with your side cutters and cut it off, you can accidentally short out your tracks, and that can ruin your day. So let's have a look at my new circuit here and see what test functionality I can include in this thing. Now, I wouldn't mind uh, basically being able to uh, replace the battery here so I can power the board, all the boards, all 10 boards on that panel. Of course, mandatory, I have to measure the output uh, voltage here. And I've got my input current 
over here. So, you know, um, really, ideally, I'd want uh, six connections like this so I can inject a test current, measure the output voltage, and also power the thing under test. Because remember that I've got a battery load detection uh, system here, so I'd want to, it'd be nice to be able to uh, test that for example so you know feed in like uh, 3 volts and make sure the lead lights drop it down to 2.65 volts under the 2.7 volt limit and ensure that the lead goes out things like that so uh, really I need six connections but as I said I've only got four there so I'm a bit limited into what I can do now of course uh, it had, my first thought was of course uh, well I can hook the current in series of all the boards so I can feed in one uh, constant current source and then loop through series like this all of the 10 boards on the particular panel but unfortunately because of the common output ground here you can't I can't just do that this is not a floating cu current input so unfortunately that plan unless I want to uh, my uh, test board to be able that plugs into this panel uh, to be able to uh, switch the current into each board separately so that's you know that's a bit messy so um, I, especially at the low currents we're talking about switching the low currents and things like that and you know I would I would do that I would have be testing all six things like this and have a nice current uh, switching system if I was manufacturing tens of thousands of these things and you know I wanted to do it properly but really this is just like a quick and dirty uh, thing to you know I may only be manufacturing you know, hundreds or a couple of thousand of these things so I don't want to go to town on this and gild the lily so what I'll do is I'll just uh, tap the output voltage of course that's mandatory and I'll power the board so there you go I've got my four connections positive and negative power the board so the one voltage will go in parallel to all 10 boards and then the output voltage of course the commons all the same but then I need to tap out the uh, 10, 10 boards on the panel so 10 individual output voltages here and then I can just run around and plug in so when I've plugged my test connector into this panel I just run around and then plug uh, the test current into each one yeah it's a manual work with a cable but hey you know it's good enough it's still gonna take save a lot of time over this clunky thing so that will be the plan I'll have a test connector on the side of the board here and I'll route out the output voltage signals through the tabs up here and all the way around the outside of my panel back to this one you know large 15 or 20 pin test connector over here and then uh, that'll feed it, allow me to feed in the voltage power up all these boards without having to plug the batteries on the back I can test the uh, low battery voltage here and I can also then just go around with the cable and go boop 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 like it literally will be that quick just touch it on like that and I'll have some red green LEDs uh, on my board just like I did over here on this board here I'll just have a whole bunch of like 10 red green LEDs which will just uh, pass fail the current into the board like this easy so I've just done a quick Dave CAD doodle here of uh, what my test board will be it'll have like a 14 way test connector here I need 13 connections so just make it 14 or 15 way just a 0.1 inch uh, header for example then it's got uh, ground reference ground and those 10 output voltages from the 10 individual boards and then they just go into a uh, window detector here which then uh, lights up a you know a red green uh, light based on a reference voltage for a particular known uh, test current and you know you might generate you know uh, one for a nominal like one volt output or something so that might be a one volt uh, reference voltage of course it's going to be a plus minus because it's a window detector so there'd be the intolerance in there of you know uh, 0.05 percent or something like that I would uh, set it to whatever tolerance I require for testing so this would be a you know a real expensive voltage reference real expensive precision resistors on here but because you only have to make one of these boards you know not a big deal and then that reference voltage can also uh, be used to generate a constant current source as well so I probably don't even need to use an external uh, my Keithley constant current sources anymore I can sort of build this in and calibrate this thing and you can have trim pots on this board and you could you know test it and trim it uh, perfectly because I only need one board it's not too hard and then I can generate the test currents these go off to uh, banana jacks and then as I said I can just you know walk around bang 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 and then 
the uh, LEDs light up on the 10 channels. I can have a selectable 3 volt and 2.6 volt voltage source to detect my uh, low battery there. And that's pretty much all there is to it, although I might also want uh, in here, for example, I might want to add in a little up a little current sense um, uh, shunt and you know then I can measure the test current as I switch on the individual board so I can go around you know switch one board on and it'd be one known current for example I can even have like a panel meter on the board as I did for that other uh, ATE board I showed you know switch it on you're going to get you know one milliamp current draw plus minus something you'll get you know switch the next one on in parallel or uh, switch that one back off and you can measure the total current to make sure there's no overloads on there. I don't know if I'll do that. It's not, you know, really a big deal because if you get your output voltages, pretty much there's going to be uh, no overload conditions with a, such a simple circuit like this. But there you go. Very easy test board. You just build one of those and bingo. You can uh, install, you can either do it in-house, which I may do for some, or then I might give this uh, test board, once I manufacture it, to the subcontract assembler, then get them to test the boards as soon as they come off the the production line and then you do some test documentation to go along with this to just explain step by step clearly to the operators uh, how to test these boards and what to look for. But as I said, if I was really going to town and doing this professionally for, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of boards, I'd, you know, I'd automate this. I'd ensure that I could feed the test current into the test connector and I'd have automated switching on here. I'd have a microcontroller and a test button which sort of ran through an automated sequence of tests and then just gave one big uh, pass fail on there. And the other thing you want is when you've got your 10 LEDs here switching on, you want to give those a number. And of course, you want to have an associated number printed on your panel so you know exactly which board failed uh, lights up. So typically, you'd uh, you know put a silk screen label there, you know, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Then you'd take off some solder mask there so that you can mark it with a uh, you know a red marker pen or something like that 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 board's uh, failed. Or you know they could come along with one of you know a red dot sticker or something like that. Not very vi visible on a red board, but you know, each uh, test house has their own way of doing that. And on a fully automated jig, of course, you would uh, probably break out the uh, connectors as well like this so that you could automate those because there's nothing worse than having to go along and manually flicking switches for various ranges and, and testing like that. So if you're really serious, you'd probably route out all those so that you could automate it with uh, relays or uh, solid state switches or uh, something like that. All right, let's actually take a quick look at my board here and just see what I'm going to do. I'm not actually going to go through the detail. I'll just show you uh, before and after, basically. I've got my uh, schematic here. I know that I want uh, four test signals, two from the battery here and two from the voltage output over here. So let's take a look at my bare board. What I need to do is uh, route some traces on my bare board through to those uh, through to the corners out here because this is just the individual board I haven't panelized it yet but I still need to route traces on my individual board now this will vary how you exactly do this will vary totally depending on which uh, PCB package you have and how it supports panelization of your board this is a uh, Altium designer that I'm using here so other packages will vary and there are multiple ways to do it within here but anyway here's my bottom layer here Here's my battery uh, positive and negative terminals down here. So what I've done is I've routed this trace out here down to this bottom right hand corner down here. And I haven't, I deliberately haven't uh, taken it all the way to the edge like that. If I just want to get a single board uh, manufactured, then uh, I can... Uh, you know, then that's just going to work fine. But then I'll bring my trace in here on the panel side and that'll just automatically join up as we'll see in a minute. And then I've got my other uh, one over here routed down here to the bottom right hand side. So that's easy. And then my output signals were really easy because they were my two uh, terminal binding posts up here. So I just routed those out to the corners and I've just got them going out. So they're my four test signals and as I said nothing on the top layer because that's going to be my visual uh, you know thing. I don't I you know I don't want to ruin that um, at all in terms of uh, you know um, spoiling the look and feel of my um, front panel board. So it'll just be on the bottom there. So anyway if we go over to our panel let's take a look here. Now here is my 
panel board and oh, it's flipped sorry about that I'll just flip it back and this is how I've done it five by two I could have made a larger panel but hey tens a nice round number nice little compact board it's got to uh, fit with any manufacturer and basically um, I've done a video on this uh, before so I won't go into the details but I've just specified my routing path here basically and uh, that's a 2.4 millimeter route and then I've just stopped short there and I just put a manual note on there to let the bare board manufacturer know that uh, they are to route out that and to them it's pretty obvious what to actually do I don't have to give any additional notes they just you know are so used to these sort of things it's really obvious and uh, of course this actually panelizes this thing for me it's a panelization routine inside here so it just duplicates my single board uh, 10 times but if you've got a package that doesn't support that then you would have to manually cut in place but anyway um so that is my bed board without any test functionality at all of course I've got my fiducials down here and my tooling holes as well they're important as I've mentioned in previous videos but now here's one I've prepared earlier this has my test connector on the side here so what I've done is I've just got a, a 15 way or 14 way uh, 0.1 inch right angle pin header here which they'll uh, solder on at the assembly stage it doesn't you know cost a huge amount just to hand solder that that connector on and I've basically got traces running out the tops and bottom corners of these boards to line up with the other traces so let's go to the bottom layer here I just switch that on and I've got the trace just coming through the little breakout tab there and just going in here so when I generate the Gerbers it'll automatically join up with the existing trace in here so I've just got that a separate trace going to the output the positive output connector of each board like that and then the negative one I've just got that uh, going to the uh, top layer and that's just a common trace on the top layer there so that yeah there we go and on the top of course I've numbered them as well five four three two one I've removed some solder mask there just so that uh, you could uh, write uh, something there easily with a marker and I've done that for all of these boards and I've brought all those signals back to the test connector the battery here these two pins here are just going parallel to uh, here we go down to the bottom corner I've done exactly the same thing down here as I did before I just have the trace going through there and the uh, positive or negative I think it is trace going through the other side and that's it that's how I've um, added some production functionality to my otherwise uh, wasted panel because usually a panel all it's there for is just a physical mounting frame with just some you know tooling holes just to hold the board in place inside the pick and place machine and the fiducials visual alignment fiducials to uh, line up the uh, pick and place head and that's all it is but we have actually added some stuff and if I wanted to I could add active circuitry onto this panel no problems at all and now I haven't gone to the effort to produce a separate schematic for this panel but if you're really doing it seriously and you want to design rule check so I can't design rule check this uh, panel board because it's so simple I don't really have to the risk of uh, me goofing something up is quite low although Murphy's Law you know how it goes but anyway if you want to design rule check that you typically have a schematic associated that and there's various ways to do that so you would have individual board schematics and then a panel level uh, schematic as well if you're really going to town on this thing but that's all there is to it so my test board will just mate with a female um, header over on this side and bang just plugs in the side and now I can power all those boards at once and also access the output test signals and here are the generated Gerber files which I've done uh, earlier I could have done it just live but uh, let's zoom in on this sucker and see what we get here now as you can see when I zoom in, up, oh, when I zoom in, something's going on there. Oh, something buggy there. Mm. No, Trey, like you can't see the uh, um, routing paths here, but as you can see, it's now these traces are now joined up on my board. So the paddle ones have just automatically, because I've overlaid them one on top of the other, automatically just joined up at the Gerber layer like that. So now my Gerber is, whoop. Oh, just fine and dandy I think that artifact might be my screen capture program doing something I don't know um, but yeah all those traces are now joined in there and I've got a full production test uh, production ready panel fantastic so there you go that's just uh, several simple options for 
uh, production testing a panelized uh, product like this. Very simple to implement, just you know, something basic like this that can really pay dividends uh, come test time. So I hope you enjoyed that. And as I said before, all of the uh, previous videos which are uh, related to this will be linked in down below. So be sure to check those out if you haven't done that already. And if you want to discuss this, best place to do it is over on the EEV blog forum because the new YouTube comment system sucks ass. Catch you next time.